Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Christ. We give thanks that you can join us this morning or whenever it is that you are watching this worship service. We invite you, as always, to quiet your hearts and your minds, to move from where it is that you are so that you can be where it is you need to be in order to worship the Lord with us. We invite you to take the bulletin and to follow along with us as we glorify God in word in prayer, in homily, scripture, and certainly through the singing voices. Join with us as we glorify God this day, this Lord's day. Our worship this morning begins with our morning prelude. Join with me as you are able in the call to worship printed in your bulletins. Let us hear what the Lord will speak. God will speak peace to the faithful. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who trust in God. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen.
go to the font to pray our prayer of confession together. Let us remember that Lord Jesus can sympathize with us in our weaknesses, since in every respect he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God of mercy, whose loving kindness endures forever, we confess that we often have failed to receive and give love, to care for others as we care for ourselves, to forgive and accept forgiveness, Gracious God, forgive us to forgive others. Heal us from the pain of self-condemnation and remind us of your ever-present love. We come to these waters as ourselves. We come as humans. We come with bold faith and little faith. We come, though, and what we find when we arrive is that the Lord wishes for us to touch these waters and to feel and to taste and to know that God loves us no matter what and that our sins are forgiven. Know this is to be true. Amen. go to God to hear the scriptures for this day, let us go to God in prayer to invite the Holy Spirit to be with us. The Lord is with you. Let us pray. Good and gracious and holy God, we invite your spirit to come upon us at this time, to silence any voice but yours, that we might hear what it is that you are calling us to hear this day and this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture is from the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis. This is the story of Joseph, the beginning of Joseph's story, his narrative in the canon of Genesis. Joseph is the youngest son of Jacob. And what we will quickly find, we're only going to read a few verses, is that Jacob, his father, loves him. Joseph's brothers don't love him. And that becomes a reality for the rest of his experience. Listen now to a word from our Lord through the writer of Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 to 4. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper, the son of Bildau and Zilphal, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report to them of their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he was the son of his old age and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him 
and they could not speak peaceably to him. Once Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 22 to 23, excuse me, 33. And this is the story of Jesus, his disciples, Jesus walking on water, and his disciples not doing it quite as well as he does. Let us listen to a word from our Lord through the writer of Matthew in the 14th chapter. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on the other side, where he dismissed the crowds. This was after the feeding of the 5,000. After he had dismissed the crowds, Jesus went up to the mountain by himself to pray, and when evening came, he was still there all alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, and for the wind was against them, and early in the morning, Jesus came walking on the water toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw Jesus walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, Is this a ghost? And they cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart. It is I, don't be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and he began beginning to sink. Peter cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to Peter, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got back in the boat, the winds ceased, and those in the boats worshipped Jesus, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Center, and I am going to tell you a little bit about what I do and how it relates to our sewing today. So my job, I'm a lifeguard. I wear this whistle, and I wear this shirt with the lifeguard on the back, and I also wear this special pack that has all kinds of special things inside that would help me if I needed to help someone. So in our story today, we see Jesus, and Jesus is helping Peter out of the water when Peter gets scared. As a lifeguard, that's part of what I do too. It's a big part of my job is to save people if they were to start feeling uncomfortable in the water and needed my help. And I just thought that it was really cool that these two things connected because part of my job is just making sure everyone is safe and comfortable and that's what Jesus wants too. Jesus wants you to feel comfortable and safe coming to him whenever you are scared or unsure or uncomfortable or hurting. Jesus is always there. Just like when I'm on the clock, I'm always up in the lifeguard stand looking out over the water and making sure everyone is safe. Will you pray with me? Lord, thank you so much for giving us your son to watch over us, for us to reach out our hands to and always have someone there reaching back. Amen.
Here is one of the many realities of the human condition. Some days you got it, and some days you don't. Some days you can be the greatest whatever it is that you're trying to be. Maybe you woke up just right, you got the exact amount of sleep you needed, you had the best breakfast, you were surrounded by the people you needed to be surrounded by, and you knocked it out of the park, so to speak. Maybe as an athlete, you did exactly what your team needed. Maybe as a business person, you were able to sell or to finalize a deal or to do whatever it is that you were called to do. Maybe as a parent, your kids actually liked every food item you put in front of them and they listened to every command that you asked them to do and there was no bribing and there was no cajoling and it was just one of those days when everything worked so well. One of those days, like a day that my friend had where he left the restaurant to go back to work and usually he hits seven street lights. They were green. Each of them was green, and he made it back in record time, thinking seriously that he needed to end his day not going back to the office after lunch, but going directly to the convenience store to buy a lottery ticket because he knew that that was the day that he had it. But as often as we have those days where we have it, there are those days when we don't. When we got the right amount of sleep, we were surrounded by the right people. Our family was wonderful, but they just refused to eat anything. They didn't listen to a word that we said, and they were the same words that we said the day before. Something was amiss. When this happens, we start to rack our brains and our hearts. We start to look at our lives. We start to look at our surroundings. We start to look at something that we can pinpoint to say, this went wrong and that's why these things happened. On the same token, we also look on the other side and we say things like, the reason that everything worked so well was because everything in our environment was perfect. The weather was great. People were listening. Clean clothes were to be had. Whatever it is, we have these thousand different reasons. You want to know why you have it those days you do, and you want to know why you don't have it on those days that you don't. Because you want to stay over here and avoid over here. We don't just do this with our own lives, with our own family lives, with our church lives. What we do is we do this with Scripture as well. We look at the stories of Joseph and of Peter, two great men and people of faith, and we think to ourselves, how can we be bold like they were bold? How might we dream dreams of greatness like Joseph? How might we have bold faith like Peter to step out of the boat and to actually walk on water? If we could, I would love to talk to the gospel writers and the writer of Genesis and say, what is it that Joseph eats before he goes to bed? What kind of mattress does he sleep upon to feel comfortable enough having these dreams? Does he get eight hours of sleep or is six better? I wonder if I could ask Peter, did he have Wheaties that morning or was it Cheerios? I want to know what they did before this in order to know why they had it one day and they didn't have it the other days. Because I want to build my life and then I want to teach you how to build your life so that we have these lives of faith that are bold and ambitious and amazing and they're filled with faith that can move mountains. They would change each of our lives. And it could be as simple as knowing what it is to eat, what it is to wear, how it is to walk, talk, think, and believe, and all will be well. And we will have it, right? Right? I know you know just as many people as I do, and I know that you know how to read about people who are just like Peter and Joseph who did all the right things, who ate all the right foods, who slept all the amounts they were supposed to sleep, and and they knocked it out of the park. They succeeded. 
Peter took one step. This other Peter took five. Joseph dreamed seven dreams, let's say, of greatness. This person dreamed ten. They did everything they were supposed to do, and it worked out even more so than the previous person. But I know that you know just as many people as I do or have read about the people in our lives, the Peters and the Josephs who did everything right and they failed miserably. They did everything they were supposed to do and and they watched the Lord walking on troubled waters and they reached out to God and they said, God, if you command me to step on these waters, I will do it. And they did it and they sunk. And I know that you know people who had bold dreams and they shared them. And, And like Joseph, their brothers and their siblings and their families and their churches and their communities threw them out, only they didn't come back. They did everything right. Their parents did everything right. Their grandparents did everything right. Their confirmation teachers did everything right. And yet, they didn't succeed. The reality of the human condition is in that two words, those two words. We are human. And by being human... We ascribe a deep level of faith in a God who knows a plan that God has for each of us. We don't always know what that plan is. And we don't always know how that plan is going to be lived out. And so we often get sucked into this individual experience, this individual endeavor to understand how it is that we can succeed or maybe our nuclear family unit can succeed or maybe it's our church can succeed or maybe it's just our community can succeed and we get really focused on ourselves and we want to only tell the good stories if it was a failure that's great to share so long as the success came afterwards but if it was a success story we want to share it so other people can do it can follow along, can be who it is that God called them to be. And the reality is, we are called to tell our stories, but we have to tell all of them. We have to tell the stories of the Peters who stepped out in faith and took a step and who reached out and God grabbed them. And the Peters who stepped out in faith and sunk never to be seen again. And the Josephs who dreamed big dreams and changed the course of the Israelites' history. And the Josephs who dreamed big dreams and ruined their family. We have to tell these stories, not for ourselves, and not just for our communities, and not just for our world. But because when we tell these stories, we tell who God is. God is the great, God is the God of the great and of the small, the successful and the failed. Those we know and those we don't know, and the fullness of God's picture is constantly getting wider and not narrower. And by telling our stories, we start to expand them. And we hear about the good, the bad, and the ugly, the triumphs and the failures. The reasons why people are out on the streets protesting, the reason that people are worried about those protesters, we have to tell those stories. The stories of great triumph, where kids follow their parents' direction and do everything right and they have these great lives, and the stories of not so great triumphs, of people who follow their parents' rules and follows and don't succeed. Almost 75 years ago, maybe 75 years ago, the United States of America dropped two bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The stories that were told was that that was the end of the war. The World War II that the world had been involved in for much too long. Just this past week, I heard this beautiful story of a Japanese-American writer who wrote the story of her mother, someone who literally was affected by the bombs dropped in Japan. The mom never wanted to tell her story because she was embarrassed by it. She never wanted to tell her story either because she never thought she had a story. 
The radiation killed many of her family and it infiltrated and penetrated her own body. And she was afraid to talk about it because she thought she was going to be dead soon. But it was only because her granddaughter, years later, wondered what that mushroom cloud picture was that we see about one of the first atomic bombs that was dropped. And her granddaughter heard that that was how the war ended. And her grandmother said that wasn't how the war ended. That was a part of it. And she started to tell her story. And she told her story to her daughter who wrote this beautiful, wonderful book called The Last Cherry Blossom. About the reality that the bombs were dropped. And there were people on whom they were dropped. Neither story is right or wrong. But they both have to be told. We have to know what it is that happened from the American side and the Japanese side in this particular example. And one of the most beautiful things that happened is this daughter who wrote the book, Kathleen Birkenshaw, spoke about the fact that her mother didn't know why she survived. After the blast happened, literally her family, many were killed. And when her daughter published this book and published it for middle schoolers who were learning about this, she knew in that moment why it was that she was alive. That she might live to have a daughter who might live to have a granddaughter in order to tell this story. We are called to tell our story because some days we have it and some days we don't. And the reality of that is God is with us on these days and these. And some of those middle days that don't quite fall into either category. And by telling those stories, we tell the fullness of a God who loves us no matter what. A God who invites us to step out in faith. Sometimes we do it and sometimes we don't. The God who tells us to dream big dreams and sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. And the God who calls us to be bold but know that it knows that it takes a while to get there. May it be so. May we tell our stories and begin the journey of boldness of faith. Thanks be to God and amen. Would you join with me in the affirmation of faith, which actually comes from another of our confessions, the confession of 1967 under the prayer and praise section. Join with me as you are able. The church responds to the message of reconciliation in praise and prayer. In that response, it commits itself afresh to its mission, experiences a deepening of faith and obedience and bears testimony to the gospel. Adoration of God is acknowledgement of the creator by creation. Confession of sin is admission to all humanity's guilt. Before God, 
and their need for God's forgiveness. Thanksgiving is rejoicing in God's goodness to women and men and in giving for the needs of others. Petitions and intercessions are addressed to God for the continuation of God's goodness, the healing of humanity's ills, and their deliverance from every form of oppression. The arts, especially music and architecture, contribute to the praise and prayer of a Christian congregation when they help people to look beyond themselves to God and to the world which is the object of God's love. continue to be invited to be God's people, whether we gather together in the church or we go out into the world. We invite you to continue to give generously, to make your pledges and your tithes, to support organizations that you know of and you love and you care for as we do the work of the church, the work of the Lord in the world. Give generously as it is the Lord who invites each of us to give. Amen.
Let us go to God in prayer for ourselves, for our community, for this church, for our nation and this world. The Lord is with you and also with you. Let us pray. Good and gracious and holy God, we lift up all the prayers that we know in our own hearts. The prayers for those that are known to us both locally, statewide, nationally and internationally. We give you thanks and praise that you call us to live bold lives of faith, and we do that with varying degrees of success. But this time, we lift up all the leaders of our world, local, national, statewide, and international, who are called to have a boldness of faith that is to follow you, to follow your way, and to have your conscience. We lift up those around us who are in need of prayer, those in our own communities. Particularly, we think and pray for the family of Jessica Luggett, for Rogers and for Gwen and for Claire, and for the extended family as they grieve her death and celebrate her life. We lift up also the prayers for those that are said in the silence of our own hearts, in the silence of wherever it is that we are praying at this time. You call us to live bold lives of faith, and sometimes that looks very different to different people. We encourage that. We we encourage that because you encourage us to be who it is that you've called us to be. I give you thanks and praise always for the gift that is the ability to pray to you, to pray with you, to know that you are walking with us. We lift up all these prayers and the prayers said in the silence of our hearts at this time and in the days and the weeks to come, knowing that you are with us always. We are bold to pray because you taught us to pray. Your son Jesus Christ taught his disciples who then taught us to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is true what the hymn says that we just sung. All other sand is sinking sand. On the Lord it is that we stand. Go and do that. Do that with varying degrees of success. And live the life that God has called you to live. So that it might build up others in faith. Go and be bold. Go from this place and keep washing your hands, wearing your masks, and caring for one another. As we continue to live in this challenging time and we proclaim God is with us. Know that God created you, that Jesus loves you, and that the Holy Spirit will sustain you. 
Amen. Thank you.